Hi, hello, good evening. Thanks everyone for coming tonight. My name is Molly McCausland. I'm the chair of the Library Building Committee. Um, I'd like to suggest, because this is a working meeting for the trustees, the building committee, and the foundation, if we could start right here, maybe with Frank, if we could just introduce ourselves to each other and if you could let people know what your affiliation is with the library, that would be great. Priscilla Armstrong, I'm on the foundation. Kelly Hassan, I'm on the Library Building Committee, principal at Pond Cove School. I'm David Sherman, I'm on the town council and the council liaison to the Thomas Memorial Board of Trustees. Kathy Ray, uh, town <coughs> council and building committee. Kate Williams Hewitt, um, building committee and uh, school board. Judy McManamy, the trustees. Ken Piper, I'm the chair of the board of trustees. Thank you. We had an agenda we were going to be working with tonight, but I've decided to shake it up just a little bit because we are on air and uh, we have our architects here tonight and they'll be giving a brief presentation. I'm hoping it's going to be around 15 minutes. Um, we had a library building committee meeting just prior to this meeting this evening and they have reached the end of the first stage of their design work. We call that schematic design. They'll talk about that just a little bit um, in more detail for us and tell us um, a little bit more about the process that they'll be working through over the next three or four months to finalize design details. Um, but at this point, we have a first iteration and I think we're all excited to have them walk us through that. So without further ado, I'm going to ask uh, Dick Reed and Cynthia Lobenstein to step up, talk to us about what they have um, prepared to present to us all tonight. After their presentation, we will um, get back together again as trustees, building committee, foundation members, and talk through our expectations of how we need to work together over the upcoming months. And we'll look forward to that after the uh, presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Molly. Um, we're very excited to be here tonight. Um, we came before the town council, uh, I believe it was November 6th, and made a presentation uh, as a result of a planning process uh, with uh, various members of the library planning committee. And we're back tonight uh, to present the schematic design of the project. So just to give you a little background, we left our last presentation with Joni Benoit and we said next steps. And now we are here uh, showing you what the next steps might be. Um, <laughs> so, uh, as Molly mentioned, schematic design is now uh, putting together some of the spaces uh, in a floor plan as well as some of the images, some of the elevations and um, images of what the building looks like. So we call them elevations of the different uh, views of the building and also uh, renderings of the front entrance. So, um, go ahead, next slide. Okay, I have a pointer here. This is a slide that we used in our town council presentation, but just to give you a little orientation where we are, this is Route 77, this is Scott Dyer Road. Uh, what you have currently is a connector uh, between the Pond Cove Annex Building and the Spurring School, and uh, our evaluation of the existing conditions is that this created a barrier on the site and between the school, the playground, and the community. And our recommendation was to remove it in our, in our expansion and renovation of the building. We also identified that there is about four feet of gray difference in the front of the building to the rear, uh, the rear of the building. And that was an opportunity for us to make another connection to the school. 
Uh, we felt that this existing Pond Cove Annex building was a significant building in the community and we really wanted to save this building for many reasons, one being that uh, a building that's existing is the greenest building that there is and we felt that it had a lot of significance. Uh, it also gives us an opportunity to use the front lawn for outdoor events. The Spurring School also we believed had uh, significance in the community and we wanted to keep this building for other uses. Uh, the existing parking is here. We wanted to expand the existing parking in this grassy area and then have overflow parking here. These, these two buildings actually don't exist anymore after this um, aerial photograph was taken. Next slide. So this is our proposed site plan. This is Scott Dyer Road. Uh, coming in through the entrance. We've now expanded the parking. It's going to be a drop-off here for buses. Uh, we've created uh, double-sided parking here and then there would be uh, overflow parking just adjacent on the grass. We've created an, an, an opening through, the two through these two buildings uh, connection of, that's uh, both a pedestrian and a visual connection and it would be going through a garden a reading garden here that would be stepping down to an outdoor play area. This there is the lower level access here. This is, would be where the children's library is and there would be an on-grade connection here. The front entrance, we've created an enhanced landscaping uh, feature here so that there could be outdoor performances in the summertime uh, with uh, outdoor seating or, or, or um, blankets on the lawn. I think that pretty much covers the, uh, the uh, site plan. There's a covered entrance as well here, which you'll see a little bit more in some of the interior uh, floor plans. Next slide. This is the upper level plan. The, the existing Pond Cove School Annex is a two-story building where it's a half a floor below grade and a half a floor above grade. I'm, my sense is you probably all know a lot of this, so I'm, I'm going to go quickly. Uh, as Cynthia mentioned, the Pond Cove School an Annex building is a great amenity, good condition, you know, ser has served well, has a historic presence in the community, and so we're going to maintain that and repurpose it. We're going to create a new entrance uh, at grade with a, an elevator that connects both the upper level and the lower level. Also a stairway that goes up to the upper level and connects to the circulation desk and a stair that goes down to the lower level. We'll talk about that after we get through this. The, the adjacent to the circulation desk, which is sort of the central control point of a library, uh, we would have computer spaces for computers and uh, a young adult space with smaller study rooms, perhaps a media lab room. Uh, behind the circulation desk would be support space, including space to process the interlibrary loans, workroom, toilet for staff, technical services, and uh, offices for director and perhaps other uses. The adult stack area and reading area would be to, to, to this side of the circulation desk and includes a public toilet, stack area, reading areas with a with a, uh, a window seat adjacent to the entrance so that as people walk up to the entrance, they can look into the library and see comfortable seating and people uh, it'd be a welcoming uh, site. Uh, study Carroll area is looking out over a planted green roof to the playground below, a corner a seating area, bay window area. Next slide. Oh, let me back up one time. Sorry, Frank. I always says. One of, the, one of the features would be this access directly from the entrance up the stairs to the circulation desk, both for welcoming but also for visual control. When you arrive here, we're talking about having a skylight and there's a, a great straight through connection between uh, the outdoors on both ends. This existing porch entry would be uh, enclosed and become a, a glass stairwell so it would provide light into this end of the building and also allow light to get into the lower level. Sorry, I'm ready now, thanks. From the entrance, you would come down some stairs to the lower level or come down the elevator. There'd be a gallery lobby space 
again, this strong access going this way where the, the, uh, the glass enclosed stairwell brings natural light down into the existing lower level of the Pond Cove School Annex building. The children's area would be here. This uh, bay window from above becomes a, a window seat from below that would be visible from the play space in the elementary school, an outdoor playground space with at grade access, uh, circulation desk for the children's library, office for the children's librarian, toilet for the children, uh, family place, story hour space, just program space for the children, and storage to support the program space, public toilets. This would be a uh, service entrance from the back of the building and the existing Pond Cove School Annex which is here would be reconfigured to have a large meeting space divisible with a folding partition and then smaller support spaces, study rooms, program space, perhaps another media lab at the lower level. Okay, thanks. In comparing the existing uh, Thomas Memorial Library from 1985 to, to this proposal. Uh, the existing library is about 14,500 square feet. The proposed library, which would include the Pond Cove School, uh, Pond Cove School Annex and the addition is about 16,000 square feet. So it's approximately a 10% increase in area. However, if you look at the existing building, it really only has about 10,000 square feet of net usable area. It has so much, you, you probably, again, probably preach, preach it to the choir, but it's very inefficient with the long connectors, four lifts. Uh, it's, it's a diagram of what not to do about a library. A library should have circulation desk and all the spaces around it. This has a circulation desk and all the spaces as far away you can get from it. So uh, by increasing the efficiency in this new proposal, uh, we pick up uh, almost 3,700 square feet or, or an increase over 40% in area. So 10% larger building, but 40% larger, more usable space. And this doesn't quite take into account, uh, also the spinoff for this is the uh, Spurwing School. I mean, we're talking 16,000 square feet plus almost 5,000 square feet for the Spurwing School. So that's another amenity that's, that's there that's, that's valuable uh, in this scheme. And the efficiency you know, is easy to talk about in numbers and comparison and percentages, but the efficiency we're trying to hope for is that somebody can go, somebody in a wheelchair or a walker or crutches can go from the children's library to the reference area easily instead of probably not being able to under the situation. So it's an efficiency so staff can interact with one another all in one place, so staff can interact with the patrons conveniently. So uh, we think this this scheme uh, takes advantage of a lot of, a lot of gifts that were available, the gift of the existing Pond Cove School Annex building. I mean, a tremendous resource, a gift, Cynthia pointed out the sloping site to sloping southwest to the, uh, the elementary school. And that's, a, that was a, that's an incredible opportunity that this takes care of, uh, advantage of. And it also um, spins off the, the uh, Spurwing School as a, as a potential uh, asset to the town. So. We really think this, this, is, this solution is a, is a really good deal for the town in terms of uh, how, how much it takes advantage of things that were already there. And this is a, a rendering of the front entrance showing the drop off and you can see this is the uh, existing Pond Cove Annex building that we've been see, ta speaking about and it's a uh, beautiful entrance, uh, uh, original front entrance which would have the lawn. Um, and then this is the entrance that we're creating now for the, the, the library, the new library. And this is the little window seat that Dick had mentioned where people can be looking out and seeing what's going on in the front of the building and the drop off and the additional parking. The materials that we're picturing are very similar to the existing building and are appropriate for the town center design ordinances, uh, asphalt shingle pitch roofs matching the existing roof slope, uh, clapboard siding stained, uh, wood, win wood probably aluminum clad wood windows, a brick base similar to the existing Pond Cove Annex building. So very compatible materials. Any questions? Thank you.
Peters. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's uh, if nobody else has any questions, I'll conclude this part of the meeting. Um, I do want to make sure anybody who has any questions feels free to ask right now before the architects go away because I know they've presented a lot of information. I know it's brand new for everyone, almost everyone sitting in this room and for the rest of us for whom it is not brand new, we've been looking at it for about an hour or an hour and a half, so it's pretty new for us too. Yes, Julia. Do you want to speak to that? The, can I use the pointer? Oh, Frank, can I have your pointer? One of these days we'll have our own, I don't know. Um, the large meeting room at, at the lower level of the existing building will seat approximately 100 people, and it, it, and it can be divided off with a, um, a good movable partition, acoustical partition, into smaller groups, but approximately 100 people. I think by code you could put more than 100 people in there and by the number you'd have a direct exit to the exterior you have an exit this way and an exit this way so you you could probably put more than that in but i use 100 just as a sort of a comfortable number yes it's going to be very usable very usable first of all we're going to increase this the ceiling height to something much more appropriate to a large meeting room there's in getting there there's natural a lot of natural light coming in through the stairwell there's public toilets right adjacent to it, uh, handicap accessible public toilets. Nighttime, nighttime, nighttime use. use. Yeah. Uh, the, the children's room could be closed off with a glass partition and a door so that, and there would be a gate at closing off the, the library from the upper level, so this would all be available for nighttime use. Just one more question. How many kiosks would you be able to have so you have a Yeah, no, I'm trying to, uh, would that be, uh, the upstairs we're showing, are you, uh, we're showing approximately uh, 16 spaces right there. Okay. And then the children's area as well. Again, additional ones in the children's area. Mm -hmm. what, what is your plan for the ceiling of the upper floor of the Monaco School? Will it be opened up? Yes. What well, we're, we'll, we're flip to that lower level. Thank you, Frank. We're talking about removing the existing floor in that location, raising, in a sense, raising the floor level up one foot to approximately one foot two inches, and then using a structural system that's very thin, but acoustic, something like concrete plank or something, so that we've minimized the structural depth. So we're, we're, we're trying to achieve approximately a nine foot ceiling there. And then we'd overbuild the rest of the existing floor so that it, on the upper level, so that it matches that floor height. And what about the ceiling on the upper? On the upper, it, it, were you asking about the ceiling at the, in the meeting room or in the upper floor up above? Upper floor of the, above the computer section. That would be an acoustic, we're picturing an acoustical ceiling, some sort of acoustical tile ceiling. When, this is schematic design, so we haven't really gotten into specifics a lot, but we would, so acoustical treatment is, is a very important criteria, so we'd be using acoustical materials from, for, certainly for the ceilings. Oh, the height. But in particular, there's a cupola there. Right. There's no way to benefit from that in the current design. We've talked about that. We could connect through up to the cupola. But I th can we go to the, up, the upper level plan? Sorry, that, uh, yeah, the, that's okay. It, it, the cupola would occur right about there. So we could, if there was a reason to connect through to the cupola, we, we felt that it would be more important to introduce natural light right there. And that slightly faded yellow circle is, is is representative of, of a skylight or so bringing in natural light. It seemed much more achievable in, 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 a, in a better location than trying to connect into the cupola, but we were, it, it, it has that potential if it was so desired. Can I get something? Mm -hmm. uh, 
one of the thoughts was that uh, that we wanted to create the light at the top of the stairs when people enter so that they come up into the light and we felt that that was a, an important um, opportunity for the circulation desk to be something special, you know, to arrive really in an event. So we were using the skylight there as an opportunity for, to draw people up the stairs when they come into the entrance. Yes, yes. But, I mean, it, it's got a foundation, roof structure, exterior walls, so there's a lot of it that would, would be, uh, would, would just be a benefit, would be a cost savings. I, I just wanted to thank you guys for uh, presenting this to us tonight. I, I think it, <clears throat> The building still keeps its traditional character, but is a you know it's a 21st century library. Very I, lots of windows on the on the diagram, which is great, which are great to see. Um, and the private study areas, I think, are wonderful. It's something we don't have today. Um, I like it a lot. Thank you. Yeah. I think it's been an, an interesting time in the history of libraries to sort of just in terms of tradition and technology to combine old and new, and, and this is an opportunity to do this with the architecture too. And it, it seems appropriate to sort of the best of the old world and, and, you know, and combine with you know, the new world so that it makes a modern library and combining both old and new. Now is the, on the, on the uh, basement level, the new stair, does that connect down into the programming space? Which new stair? Uh, right here. It's this one. Or yes, it's, exactly. this one. Yes, it does. It goes all the way down. So that that natural light will come right down the stairway, and it's a glass. At the, at the lower level, this wall will be a glass wall, so that the natural light will come down into that that area of this of the lower level. So conceivably, this could uh, offer these. Uh, we could have programming space. Uh, open when the library was closed. Excellent. Oh, yeah. I, maybe we go to the lower level plan again. So the the upper level would be, you'd enter sort of out here, and then the upper level would be closed off. You'd come down these stairs. The children's library would be closed off. at, at non, So all of this area would be available. The toilets, the, the smaller meeting rooms, the large meeting would be available for, for nighttime use. That's and, great they would be safe to exit because there'd be a, a, an exit here and another exit here and another exit here. So it'd be very safe nighttime use also. Thank you. There's also a, a gallery at that lower level where artwork can be displayed. So as people are waiting for events, they can be um, watching, looking at the art exhibits. Quick answer, no, but I should t use this to explain where we are. In the, we're really, the schematic design is really uh, just sort of getting sort of the space and bulk of, of this. Our next phase, and we have um, structural, mechanical, civil engineers. We will, the next phase that we'll be going through is typically called design development, where we bring in all of that expertise and we start to explore that. So we will have that analysis uh, and we'll be looking at various systems that, and how they perform and what the advantages are for presentation to the building committee and a decision-making process. Have you ever done a certified building? Yes, we have. Yep. Would you recommend that to consider? I think the, um, would we recommend it? I think what we would do an energy efficient, we would do a building that met the criteria for LEED certification. The question is, do we want to spend the additional money f to, for certification, which is a substantial amount of money. But the goal will be, and has always been, to make the building uh, so energy efficient it would qualify for LEED certification. And we, we've, we've done buildings like that. Yes. Yes, that's at the upper level adjacent to the uh, next floor. <laughs> uh, 
we're picturing this area. There's been a lot of discussion about this area called the young adult area. And um, incorporating young adults into the libraries, uh, I've said many times, it's, it's as complicated as how to do the book drop, which is really complicated because every library seems to do it differently. But uh, how to, it's, a, it's an appropriate location for control from the circulation desk. We're talking about having glass in part, at least part of the wall of technical services up here. So there'd be visual control over the young adult area. We've, we're spending a lot of time and will continue on how to achieve sort of acoustical separation too. But the thought was we put the young adult area here so it would be adjacent to the circulation that these smaller rooms, some of which exist, would support quiet independent study uh, or noisy study, I guess, because they'd be soundproof rooms and as far away from the adult quiet reading areas as we could get. So there's the, the separation. But the concern is that um, the computer area is also, in a, this is an appropriate location for control from the circulation desk. Uh, any noise that the young adults might make and be encouraged to make would be disruptive to these users. So we're thinking about perhaps a, various options on how to separate the acoustically, and, but keep them connected visually. Anybody else? Last chance? No? Great. I, thank you, Dick and Cynthia. And um, I would just like to mention once again that, uh, as Dick just said, our next stage will be design development, where some of these concepts will be further refined and developed. We will be looking for further input. We'll have further outreach um, opportunities coming up in the probably the next month to month and a half so we'll be looking for additional feedback from the public we'd also love to hear from all of you sitting here today as well I think your comments were incredibly helpful raised the sorts of questions we need to keep hearing from the greater community so we understand exactly what the needs and the interests of people in town are so unless anybody else has anything else to ask, I'm going to say thank you and good night. And I think we're all set. Thank you. <laughs>